going on guys, my name is Ryan and in this video I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about my internet setup and most importantly the Wi-Fi setup that I'm running. So most people just kind of get a modem router access point kind of combo box from their ISP and they use that and they're happy enough with it. And some of the times that can be enough but most of the time that really isn't enough to be able to get a strong Wi-Fi experience around your house. Instead, I opted to build a PFSense router because I had some old hardware that I had just lying around. So I thought what better to make use of it than use this PFSense software to be able to create an enterprise grade security firewall for my internet setup here at home. So the one thing about it was it was very good. It had a lot of features that a lot of kind of consumer boxes didn't have, but the downside of it, which is more kind of a, a personal downside, was just the hardware that I was running it on. And that was because the CPU itself didn't have any onboard graphics, so I had to run a graphics card at the same time. And I didn't really wanna put you know, a really good graphics card into this because it's not going to be used whatsoever. So what I ended up doing was using an old graphics card that I had, and the issue with that was the fan on it was really loud, and there was no way for me to turn it down or anything like that. And also the motherboard itself required an additional fan to run on top of it because it got pretty warm. And with the firewall running 24 seven, I didn't wanna make any risks when I wasn't at home to make sure that it was cool. So I had this solution running for quite a few months and I was really happy with the way it was working. Especially logging in, I could see real time bandwidth usage, which is probably the one feature that I really like the most and what I'm missing from my current setup. So what I ended up moving to was the Unify USG. So the main thing about that was I was already running the Unify access points, so it would really fit into the whole Unify ecosystem very well. And as well as that, it was also no fans, so in the room that it was gonna be in, it was gonna be making no noise whatsoever compared to before where the fans were running. And to be honest, it was a little bit loud and you could hear it from the rooms just outside. So by moving to the USG, I now had everything under this kind of one dashboard that I was able to monitor everything from. I had two of the Unify access points already, so it kind of made sense to move to the Unify USG. However, there are a couple things that I don't like about it when compared to using the PFSense router. So one of the things that I lost when moving to the Unify USG was the ability to view real-time bandwidth. And that is something I actually looked at quite a lot because I wanted to monitor all the different things that were going on on my network and really going out onto the internet. And now I can't really see that in real time. And to be honest, it's kind of a little bit hard to actually see what devices are using the most internet in the current Unify setup. Now, one of the weird issues that I also get from moving to the USG was that my wired devices, I'm not getting full information from. And I think that's predominantly down to the fact that I'm not using Unify Switch. And while their switches look brilliant and a lot of them have PoE as well, which is really, really nice, the problem with it is I already had this switch that's gonna do 90% of the same things as the Unify one. So there wasn't really a need for me to upgrade and it's really annoying that I can't get this information in the current setup. In addition to this, you also need the Unify Cloud Key to be able to really save all this information that you're capturing because without that, all the kind of hardware keeps working and everything's fine, but you don't get all this buildup of data that if you want to look back on and analyze and see what's kind of going on, you have to run this dedicated Cloud Key. And to buy one of them is actually quite expensive from a consumer point of view for the home where it's just this little bit of kind of an add-on and to most people they won't even need it but for me I kind of want to be able to see everything and I wasn't willing to go out there and buy one so what I ended up doing was I have a computer running 24 7 at the moment as it is it's an unraid server so what I ended up doing was running the Unify controller which is the same as the cloud key and I'm running it on a docker container and it's gathering all the information for me which is working very well. So while there are a lot of cons to the USG, there are actually a lot of pros to it as well. And one of the main things for that is the all-in-one dashboard that has really a nice user interface to it and you're able to see everything within there. So you've got you know a dedicated overview page and also pages to have a look at the access points and the clients and them, the wired network and also the performance of your USG. 
and the thing that I really liked was the ability to see historical usage of the CPU and memory on the USG as well just to be able to make sure that I'm not limiting anything because of the hardware that I'm running. And that's something on the PF Sense writer I could see as well. I could see my memory usage and my CPU usage, which was quite nice as well. Um, another downside to the Unify system is it's not in real time as well, where the PF Sense one was, which is something that I really enjoyed as well when I see that I'm kind of pushing speed test or there's a lot of data moving throughout. And I can see the CPU usage jump up in real time, which was really nice. And the main thing about this is the ability to use the Unify mobile app because PFSense just blanket does not offer one. And I think that would be something that would be really nice and kind of round out the PFSense kind of ecosystem, but the Unify do it really well with their mobile app and it integrates very well with the controller and I can see all my historical usage and whatnot. So talking a little bit about the Wi-Fi, I'm running a total of three access points. Two of them are Unify and another one's just a Netgear kind of router combo box that I have just turned into an access point. So one of them is kind of in the main kind of kitchen area where people spend a lot of their time and that's where I'm running a Nano HD. The other access point I have is the Unify AC Lite and the reason that I got that for was because the distance between where the current Nano HD is and where people would be using kind of Netflix in bed on their phone or something like that was just a little bit far away and I wasn't getting the best speeds as you could get. So I decided to get this entry level box that was just going to be dedicated towards this kind of one bedroom and making sure that the speeds there were very fast. And while this covered the majority of the house and also the back garden, which is something that I'm really happy about, the room at the top of the house was still not getting the best signal. So what I ended up doing was running a dedicated wire up there as well and using the old kind of router combo box that I was using, it's a Netgear Nighthawk which was actually a really good router box at the time and what I've ended up doing was just turning that into access point mode so the USG is still handling the whole firewall aspect and this box is just giving off that little bit of extra Wi-Fi just to a couple of people at a time so it's a little bit overkill for the two people that would be using it at most but to be honest it really makes a world of a difference in terms of speed and connectivity in the room that it's in. So if I was to reverse time and pick again if I was going to get the PF Sense router or a Unify USG, to be honest there's not much in the difference between the two of them and I would be happy with either route that I would go down. And if I was to buy something again I'd probably still stick with the Unify system just because it's very much easier to kind of plug and play to a user but if you really want those kind of more advanced features I would still stick with something like a PF Sense based router. So yeah, that's a little bit about my internet setup and the reasons why I chose the current hardware that I'm running. And to be honest, I'm really happy with the way it's turned out because you get a lot of decent signal throughout the house and there's no real dropouts from really anywhere in the house at the moment. And I'm also getting some good signal in the garden as well, which is really nice. And I think the best thing really is the fact that if there's loads of people using the internet at the same time, it doesn't really slow down at all for any one client which really is the main thing because when you have so many people on at the same time, the last thing you want is to be slowing it down. So I am really happy that we're not running into that issue. If you've any questions, hit me up in the comments below and I'll see you guys in another video. See ya.